Hello and welcome to another opportunity to attract the man of your dreams and to finally be in the relationship that you've always wanted to be in. Today I want to show you how to make a man beg for a second date. Yes, today I want to share very specific techniques with you and also some tips that, oh shock horror, in the first moment might sound a little bit offensive, but hey, if you listen to more than one of my episodes until now, then you know that I'm not very politically correct and that I really take this one sentence very seriously. I'm here to share with you what works and not what you want to hear. My passion for helping you is bigger than my desire that you like what I tell you. And that's also what motivated me to record this episode for you. Today it's all about how you can impress him to such an extent on the very first date with you that he's begging you for a second date. And that's exactly what you want. I mean, if you are on a date with a guy who's successful, who's ambitious, who's amazing, who's good looking, and you think to yourself, oh my god, I want to marry that guy, I want to have babies with that guy. Okay, maybe you're not going that far on the first date, but let's say you are at least interested in him, you can imagine another date with him, then you want him to want the same. And that's why it's a good idea to make a deal with your smartphone before the date. And now you might be saying, making a deal with my smartphone? Sebastian, what the heck are you talking about? I want you to make a deal with your smartphone and I want you to tell your smartphone, you stay in the pocket. And whenever the smartphone wants to get out of your handbag, you say, stay stay, stay there, don't move. And the reason why I say this is because I know a lot of successful men and I'm also quite successful. And the number one KO criteria on a first date is when a woman considers her smartphone as more interesting than the conversation with me. And I talk to so many guys about that and they all see it the same way. And I also know, and yes, now it gets a little bit offensive, that women are in general more smartphone addicted than men, which is completely natural because women receive way more attention on social media. I mean, when a guy uploads a picture on Instagram, he maybe gets one like, two likes. When you as a beautiful woman upload a picture on Instagram, you get like after like after like after comment after comment after comment. It's a completely different dynamic. And that's why your smartphone is probably going bing bong, bing bong, bing bong, while a guy, or let's say the average guy, is happy when his smartphone goes burp once a day. That's the big difference. And that's why it's so important that you keep your smartphone in your pocket the whole date, or let's say in your handbag or wherever you have it. I actually, and yes, I really did that, I once walked away from a date with a woman who was only interested in her smartphone. I just wanted to establish a conversation and she seemed interested at first and then she was just with her smartphone playing and typing and doing all that stuff, answering texts, looking at comments, social media and now you could imagine, hey, that must have been a terribly boring date, Sebastian, why have you been so boring? But she actually texted me after that event, after I moved out, or let's say moved away, whatever is the right English word to say, moved out, moved away, I moved away from her, I moved away from the date, I got out of the date early. She then texted me and apologized and told me that she wasn't even aware of the fact that she was doing it. That's how much of a habit this can become. So be careful with that. Be careful that you don't give him the feeling that your smartphone is more important than him. You might be missing out on a relationship with the guy of your dreams just because you're so in the habit of always checking your smartphone. Always think about what this communicates. And then dress up for him in a way that screams girlfriend material, wife material, and yes, now it gets a little bit offensive again, but it is the scientific truth, and if you understand this principle, your dating life will change. The very first time I mentioned that with a Skype coaching client, I often get a very negative reaction, but then when they try it, when they put this principle into practice, they tell me, oh my god, why didn't I think about this earlier? And that's the principle of hotness versus attractiveness or hotness versus beauty. If you are dressing up to be hot when you're on a date with a guy, he is way more likely to put you into the category one night stand. If you dress up as beautiful, elegant, he's way more likely to put you in the category of relationship material. And there's been a lot of studies about that, especially in the field of evolutionary biology that had a look at how men respond to certain pictures on Instagram. 
And for example, nowadays young women are conditioned to look hot on Instagram. And then the same young women always complain that they only meet the guys who are looking for one-night stands. Even though from a biological perspective, that's exactly the mating signal that they send out. That's why it's so important to think about how you can put yourself in the girlfriend category. And you can do that with beauty, class and elegance. I know it's politically incorrect and I'm not telling you how you have to dress. I don't care at all how you dress. It's totally up to you. I'm just giving you the scientific facts and you can then do with it whatever you want. And then do some research if you already know what his profession is. That's a great way to impress him. If you, for example, do your research about his profession, about what he works in, and you simply communicate by doing that research and by knowing what his business is all about or his career is all about, you communicate, yes, this woman gets me, this woman understands me, and this is incredibly important. And of course, when you then communicate that, You also want him to be so obsessed with you that he doesn't look at other women, he doesn't even think about other women, and he only thinks about you. And if you want to find out how seven of my amazing coaching clients did exactly that with the man of their dreams, then you can go to gethimkeephim.com slash obsession, or you can click on the first link in the description. Alternatively, if you don't want to read about their experience, you can also directly find out more about this revolutionary method by going to gethimkeephim.com slash video or by clicking on the second link in the description. And then give him a tight and stimulating hug when you meet him. And yes, you can totally use the first couple of seconds of the first date to already make him so addicted to you that he wants to have a second date with you. And all you gotta do is when you greet him, when you arrive at the dating venue and he's waiting there with a smile on his face, you then give him a hug. Of course, you want him to initiate the hug, so let's hope that he doesn't go for the handshake, let's hope that he has confidence, and you then give him a hug. And while you're giving him a hug, you can simply push your body against his a little bit, just very subtly, and if you want, if you're a little bit of a risk taker, an adventurer, you can also move your cheeks, yeah, you move your head basically, not your cheeks, you move your head a little bit to the side, so that his cheeks are touching your cheeks. And don't worry, I'm talking about the cheeks in your face, nothing naughty. So yes, that's something you can do to communicate from the get-go. Yes, I'm okay with body contact. Yes, I want to meet you. I want to be close to you. And this, of course, sends all kinds of amazing tingling sensation in his body and maybe also into your body. And what you can do then, when you are in the dating venue is to always, 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 always sit next to him, never opposite. And I know in every romantic comedy movie in the world, you see a guy sitting opposite of a woman, and then they're having dinner. But have you ever seen in any of these movies, when the guy sits opposite to her at the dinner table, that the guy was touching her, that she was touching him? that they had an intimate moment of body contact. Of course not, because it's impossible. Unless you reach awkwardly over the table and grab his hand, there's no possibility whatsoever that he will initiate the touch and you also can't initiate the touch. That's why people in the purchasing department always sit opposite, because they want to pressure the other person. Sitting opposite always creates this confrontational energy. And that's also why salespeople always sit next to the subject, because they want to create an intimate atmosphere. They want to, yeah, they want the other person to feel good, to feel comfortable. And that's exactly what you want on the first date, so that he will back you for a second date. And of course, during that process, when you're then sitting next to him, and you're getting closer and closer and closer and closer and closer, then eye contact and a genuine smile can be so effective. I know it's a very basic tip, but it works. So always remember to every now and then hold eye contact, look into his eyes and communicate your interest with your eyes. And then what you can also do is to guide him to an emotional state where he feels so connected with you and so at peace in this situation that he'll want to see you again. And the best way to do that is usually, and I say usually for a reason that I will go into in just a moment, but usually when you talk about friendship and family. Because when you talk about these topics, you not only create positive emotions in him, but you also qualify him in a sense to find out, does he actually want to have a family? Or does he value his family? Does he value friendship? Is he the kind of guy that I want to date? 
And I said usually because sometimes you have to be careful in case there's some unresolved trauma, then it might not be a good idea, but you will easily find that out by observing how he reacts to when you start to talk about family and friendship. And what you can then also do is to complement some qualities that you truly admire about him. And these qualities should preferably be qualities that you're also looking for in a boyfriend. I mean, if you're on a date with a guy and you say he doesn't have any of the qualities that I'm looking for in a guy, then you also don't want him to beg for a second date. You only want the guy who you really want to beg for a second date, obviously. So if he's the ambitious guy that you want, then compliment this quality in him, especially if you get the feeling that he values this quality about himself. Or maybe he does something altruistic, maybe he's helping people. Then compliment this fact and let him know that you admire this about him. The more you give him the feeling that he has qualities that you are looking for, the more he will get the feeling that you are compatible with each other and the more he gets the feeling that, yes, this woman gets me. And then do something at the end of the first date that almost none of my coaching clients did before they started working with me. And it's so simple and yet so powerful. Let him know at the end of the date that you want to see him again. I know, shocking, right? But so many, or almost all, I can't think of anyone who did it, almost all of my coaching clients, who I told that in a Skype coaching session, said to me that they never did that. And the reason why they don't do it is because they're afraid to get rejected. And of course, you might also be afraid to get rejected, but at some point in life, you have to take a risk. And now is the perfect moment. And to be honest, if you formulate it in a good way, in the right way, then it's not really risky. You don't, for example, have to say, hey, I can really imagine a second date with you. You just formulate it in a casual way. You could, for example, say, I really enjoyed the evening with you. Would be great to do that again. You don't have to mention the word date. But if you communicate to him, yes, I want to see you again, I enjoyed that time with you, then he's way more likely to text you again for a second date. And that's exactly what you want. Because always remember, when you don't give guys clear signs, they overthink everything. And then he might not text you again because he has the feeling that you don't like him, even though you want nothing more than a second date with him. And that's how you make a man back for a second date. And I want to mention it briefly again. If you not only want to get the second date, but you also want him to be so obsessed with you that he only has eyes for you and that he ignores all other women, then you can go to gethimkeephim.com slash obsession or click on the first link in the description to find out more about how some of my coaching clients did that. Or if you want to watch a video in which you can find out more about this amazing method, then you can directly click on the second link in the description or go to gethimkeephim.com slash video. And if you enjoyed watching this video, if you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up and leave a comment in the comment section below. Share your opinion, share your thoughts. I would love to hear from you. And I would love it even more if you would hit the subscribe button and smash that notification bell so that you get notified whenever I release a new video for you. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video.